And finally, we're back with some more tennis ace sets. Uh, it's been a while for this one. It's actually, been a while since the last video. Uh, cluster headaches have been a bit of an issue for the past couple of weeks, so I decided I'd better take some time off from uh, doing these. Just while I wasn't feeling too great, and I'm okay today, so we'll get this done. And we're going to pick up where we left off last. And for those who don't remember, <laughs> it was a while ago. Uh, I finished a little early on that video because a few were uh, technical difficulties. So uh, we actually jump in backgrounds between the two of them. That's me confusing. But anyway, if you uh, did forget, uh, Hector was just uh, at the tennis courts and uh, thinking about his slump and how he's been playing, that kind of thing. And this is his reaction. So we'll play through the rest of uh, day 11 here. And then we'll get on to uh, at least some of day 12, which, if I remember rightly, is a big tennis match. So I may not do that one today. We'll do that for the next episode. Okay. In a preamble, let's get back to the normal stuff. The stuff you're all waiting for. But I have to stop getting so defensive about it. I already know that I'm not performing my best. It's the whole reason why I asked Kei Kun to be my practice partner. I really have to stop getting discouraged so easily. Ah, oh, there you are. I hear the sound of hurried steps echoing from behind me, and sure enough, Shuichi's there. Oh, hey Shuichi, what's up? Oh, could I talk to you for a second? Uh, something I wanted to ask you this morning, but um, I kind of forgot given the whole thing with the taste testing. Ah, yeah, that disaster. Oh, disaster? Oh, a disaster? Well, I thought it was fine. Well, most of the food was good. Good? Uh, maybe. Oh, certainly bad for my heart, though. Oh, I don't think it was that bad. Most of it didn't look too bad. Only one or two dishes had me scared to try them out. Well, duh, you're the master of repulsive cooking. I'll defer to you on that. Anyway, what is it that you wanted? Uh, so, uh, I just heard the news last night. Dad's latest business trip is ending early. He's coming back home next month. Oh, really? How come? I thought he'd supposed to be away for six months. Yeah, well, apparently the negotiation he's mediating between his company and whoever it was they were trying to make an agreement with broke down. Well, that kind of sucks. You think he'll be in a bad mood when he comes back? Oh, I know he'll be in a bad mood. That's why I kind of wanted your help organising a welcoming party for him. I mean, he was away for almost a month. Doesn't your father hate parties? Nah, just the ones that make too much noise. I think a quiet guy's been with his closest friends and some good food could put him in a decent enough mood. Then maybe, just maybe, he might not make my life hell once he's back. Sure, I'll help you. Uh, what sort of food do you think of getting for the party? There are a ton of places we could order from. Nah, I think homemade food would be best. You know, to give him that homely feeling. I was thinking that I could cook. Oh god, no. Um, uh, that's... <coughs> that's an idea. What, you don't think I can cook? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying at all. Just that, well, uh, maybe it'd be best if you organised other stuff. I'm the other one who knows his friends and what he likes, so maybe you should organise the party and let me do the cooking. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I guess that works. In fact, it's probably a better idea. Oh, thanks, Hector. Saved by the gong, or in this case, Shuichi's gullibility. If I'd let him make the food at the party, all those guests would be leaving caskets. I'd very much prefer if my best friend weren't charged with multiple counts of involuntary manslaughter. Well, come to think of it, I'm pretty sure I can find an old copy of Dad's address book. Well, I might not know all of his friends by name, but I could reach out to the people he knows from that. An address book? In this day and age? Would he just use his phone's contact list? Oh, well, that's terrible with technology, remember? Oh yeah, that's true. He still uses an old feature phone from six years ago. Okay, if you want homemade food to make him feel more at home, he'll probably prefer it hosted at your place, right? Yeah, I doubt Dad would want to go out to the house after arriving from a month-long trip anyway. I got it. Should we have a cake? Well, every party should have a cake. What kind of cake does your dad like? Ah, uh, that's easy. We spent the next several minutes having fun planning out this little party for Shuichi's dad. In the end, neither of us got much work done in our respective clubs. I even got chewed out by coach because of it. Uh, it's hot. It's way too hot for 5pm on a spring day. I know the weather forecast said we'd have a heat wave this weekend, but damn, I didn't expect it to come so soon. I'm so glad I changed out those sweaty clothes into something more comfy. 
You're afraid to be this strong. No sign of June either. 5.15. I've been waiting out here for over ten minutes already. Why is it that when it comes to that tiger, I always sit around waiting for a long time? Uh, Hector Sun? Ah, oh, Kate Coon, I didn't expect to see you. I didn't see you there. I'll say I walked all the way over to you and even called you a few times before you answered. Is that case of Kate's voice I can't remember? <clears throat> oh well. Is that so? <laughs> Sorry, I don't function all that well in heat. Kate's K wrinkles his nose. And it doesn't help that you're still covered in sweat. You should really start using the showers after practice. I'm already having a hard time with the heat as it is. Don't pile on more stress. Sorry. Oh, by the way, I didn't see your practice today. I thought you'd gone home early. Now, I had some things I needed to take care of first. And what happened? It's, well, uh, I guess it's okay to tell you. Case K looks away and down at the floor. This gesture alone is enough to pique my curiosity. I'm sure you can. What's up? A few days ago, I went to a music store to buy a new mic. When I was there, I, um, I had to play a song to test the mic and all. Since I didn't have any recording booth three, I kind of recorded on the store floor. Oh, wow, was it awkward? A little bit. I kind of zoned out to it uh, while playing. I felt really weird once I noticed the crowd that formed. Oh, damn, you tracked to the crowd while testing out the mic. But yeah, they seemed to think it was an event happening at the store. I got a lot of praise that day about how I have a good singing voice and, and how I'm good with a guitar. So I decided to join the light music club. Oh, that's neat. But wait, what about the manga club? I quit that a while ago. Right around the time they insisted I cosplay as a popular visual novel character at club's booth in the festival. Oh, that could have been fun. It was a character from a homo game. Ah. So yeah, done with that. I can't just go into the light music club to watch, but they wrote me into applying. Did you know that a light music club actually has a band? As in the band members are the only people in the club? That's a bit fishy, why aren't there more people? Not many people are willing to pick up an instrument and learn it, and that's a minimal requirement to join. Hmm. I think I'd be interested in learning guitar at some point. Maybe you could teach me. Case Case scoffs, shaking his head in negative. Ah, sorry, I'm no way qualified to teach someone. You know what? Why not? Teaching requires patience, a trait that I definitely don't have. I'd probably lose my patience and end up screaming at you for base mistakes. Huh. You don't really look the type to lose patience that often. Yeah, you're kidding, right? I lose my patience all the time. I always get irritated in the courts and end up not playing well because of it. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Either way, I ended up spending all my time after class over there. The band is really interesting. The vocalist is very talented. She's a senior from her artist class. Oh, is that so? Uh, what kind of music do they make? They don't have any originals yet. They're very good players, mind you, but they're not very good composers. It's all the sheets for some of their attempts and, <laughs> well, bad. So bad. But still, the vocalist's voice. I could listen to her sing all day, but it was truly amazing. I'm glad you had fun, and what did they think of your singing and playing? Oh, I had that, um... Case came immediately becomes restless, scratching at the back of his neck and looking away. What? Well, I kind of didn't do anything. What? Why? I got, um, shy, I guess. Shy? You got shy? You went into that club specifically so you could sing and play guitar. Well, what would you have done? Played! Oh yeah? Well, you're much braver than I am then. Oh, come on. I hide my eyes behind my hands, taking deep breaths to calm myself. Case K, what's the point of you signing up for the Light Music Club? You just go there to watch. What do you say if June signed up for the Tennis Club just to watch? If you just call me Case K. That's what you focused on? Sorry, sorry, it's just I'm not used to calling me by my full name. Seriously, you go in there for the music, then you should, you know, play music. I'm still not sure on that. I want to, but... I stand, silently waiting for him to continue his sentence, but he continues to stare at me without saying a word. But... I'm... I'm shy. You routinely play tennis in big tournaments watched by dozens if not hundreds of people, and yet you decide to feel shy about singing in front of four, maybe five high school students? I never said it was a rational fear. Well, good, because then you'd be wrong. 
Oh, shut up. I'll do it on my own time. As long as you actually do it. You're very annoying sometimes, you know that? I try to put on the most smug grin I can muster. Oh, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. You're unbelievable. I try. Oh, by the way, you're going to have someone come pick you up today. Yes. Oh, it's a wife. Oh, it's nothing major. I just wanted to know if you'd like to walk with June and I part of the way home. I think Shuichi might even join us if June takes too long. Hmm. Keisuke's nose, Keisuke's nose twitches a couple of times. Something he always does when he's deep in thought. I guess I could. At least I need to go home by one of my father's cars. I never said I had to be picked up at school. You really always look for a way to weasel out from under your family's rules, don't you? Always. I hear the sound of approaching footsteps with a hurried pace. We both turn around at the same time to see a tiger huffing him with his bow, brow covered in beads of sweat. Make the sound. I'm sorry it took so long. I lost track of time. Oh, Urusha Harasan. Hi. Uh, yeah, hi. Are you all right? You look very winded. Oh, I'm fine. I didn't notice how much time was passing when I practiced. I only stopped when a teacher came back to get me. Right over here because I didn't want to keep Hector Sun waiting any longer. Well, at least you're dedicated to your craft. True, but I'd still prefer if he kept his eyes on the clock every now and then. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's fine, it's just a little hot today, that's all. Well, I didn't notice it much. The piano room has air conditioning, after all. Die! What, what did I do wrong? Hector San's been standing out in the heat since practice ended after hours exercise and sweating. I don't think he'd like to hear you talking about being in an air conditioned room. Ah, sorry, sorry. I sigh. Even if I'm a little annoyed at him, I can't really stay mad at this guy. It worries me that I'm starting to develop a weakness to him. Yeah, now that I think of it, I'm the same way with Aki. Oh, it's fine, don't don't worry about it. Oh good, I thought I messed up big time there. It'd take a lot more than that to piss me off. Oh? He's lying, of course, he's incredibly petty. Hey! What? It's true. Since when am I petty? You once went a full day without talking to me because I accidentally spoiled the end of a movie that was based on the book that was released 40 years ago. That's not being petty. I kind of think it is. What? You too? Who did what? Yeah! Shuichi shows up and nowhere, putting a hand on my shoulder and speaking up. Jesus, settle down. Why is everyone deciding to sneak up on me today? Everyone, did I miss something? This was the first time I've seen you getting sneaked up on today. Well, it was Sire a little earlier. So, two people? That hardly qualifies as everyone, you know. Oh, shut up. Hank the sun has just been over dramatic again. What? Oh, you guys suck. Actually, I do agree with Junkun here. Of course you do. Well, anyway, what's up? What are you guys talking about? What did I miss? Shuichi, get this. They were telling me that I, this brilliant ray of sunshine standing before your eyes, am petty. Can you believe this? First of all, brilliant ray of sunshine? Dude, get over yourself. Hey, how rude. <laughs> oh great, now all three of them are cracking up at my expense. And second of all, you are petty. What? Yeah, you get upset and pout for the silliest of reasons. I remember this one time, this was a couple of years ago when I was sleeping over your place, when you got mad at me after I won every single round of Sidewalk Fighter 2. You then proceeded to make dinner. For everyone but me. You told me, I'm sorry, you're already too full of yourself to fit anything else in there. I had to go hungry that night. Oh wow, that's awful. But, but, I was a child. You are 15, you're old enough to know what you were doing. But, but, are you going to do this the whole walk home? If so, and I'd rather have my car come pick me up here. Well, how rude. Hey, the son, they're doing this on purpose to annoy you. Wait, what? Case and Shuichi finally break carriage and begin to laugh hysterically. The point of having trouble catching their breaths. You, you, you... Yes? When did you... How did you... Why did you... Da! Is uh, that supposed to be Javanese? I didn't understand a single word. Uh, screw you guys. I'm leaving. Oh, don't be like that. We're just having some harmless fun. At your expense, of course. The two continue to harp on with the entirety of the walk back home. Completely lost track of time at this point. All I know is they've been sitting in the living room glued to the TV since after dinner. Ah, uh, Haniki. 
The light is flicked on. I reach out with my hands to cover the sudden assault on my vision. What are you still doing up? What do you mean still doing up? Is everyone else gone to sleep? Ah, uh, yeah, it's 3 a.m. Wow, already? I look at the clock on the far wall, and sure enough, it's already that late. I didn't even notice the time passing. Seriously, what are you doing up? Aki yawns, rubbing his eyes. He flops down the couch, lying the back of his head on my lap and looking directly up at me. I've been watching some footage. A footage? For the first time since he came downstairs, Aki looks at the TV screen. Oh, is that the kid case case I told you about, the Akita? I nod, keeping my eyes glued to the screen. You've been watching videos of him for two weeks. Are you sure you should be obsessing so much about a single player? I can't help but worry. Something about the way he plays just ticks me off. You mean how he plays so much like you? Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I've already rewatched this particular match four or five times. I keep looking for something that's not there. For some reason, seeing this guy play just makes me uneasy. You don't even know if you're going to go up against him anyway. I get the feeling that I will. If we're talking about skills alone and getting rid of all of the factors, I can easily see this guy placed in the top four. In fact, the only player than me in the prefecture that can imagine beating him is Keikun. If we're talking about skills alone, Keikun should be better than him, but... I just have this growing sense of discomfort whenever I watch this guy playing. That's weird. I look down and see Aki staring intently at the TV, also watching the match going on the screen. What's weird? Well, it's not just the guy plays like you. Every single move he makes looks like a carbon copy of you. As if he's mimicking you while playing. Yeah, I noticed this. This is really creepy. I think he's actually mimicking you. I don't know. When I met him, he seemed to already know me. So you're saying that it's possible? Well, maybe. I hope not. It'd be kind of creepy if it were true. He seems to be pretty good. I don't think I could beat him. Well, I'd be a tall order. He's four years older than you. He shrugs, looking back up at me. So you were beating high school players by your first year of junior high, and professional players face people much older than them all the time. Professional players have all at least reached full maturity. You still have the body of a kid against someone near adulthood. So doesn't explain how you did it. Well, honestly, I don't even know all that well. And it's not like I was beating high school players left and right, maybe once or twice. Aki, I think you exaggerate too much when it comes to me. But it's true. Maybe, but um, how can I put this? You seem like you think I'm the ultimate player or something? Ugh, never mind. This is not the conversation I want to be having with my kid brother at 3am. I'm going to head to bed. You should go back too. I'm sure, I've scrubbed a glass of water. That's what I came down here to do anyway. I shut off the television and Aki propped himself up from my lap, letting me get back up. By the way, Nikki, is it okay if some of my friends from the club watch your matches? I don't mind, but why they be coming over to, walk to my match instead of yours? I asked them to record your matches from a lot of angles for me. Why? Well, my coach said he wanted us to get videos of players we admired to try and base ourselves on them. So you want to try playing more like me? Yeah. I get the feeling there's a second doppelganger of me about to be born. I, uh, uh, sure, knock yourselves out. Yay, thanks. I really have to learn to say no to him. Aniki! I nearly jumped from my seat as the voice echoes loudly right next to my ear. Whoa, what? I finally noticed Aki standing right in front of me, arms crossed and pouting. You were spacing out again. I've been trying to get your attention for almost a full minute now. Sorry, I guess I'm a little out of it. Aki sighs, rubbing the back of his neck. A little. I had to scream in your ear for you to finally notice I'm here. And you have good hearing to begin with. Yeah, about that. Next time he's up on the screen, will you? My ears are still ringing. I swear I can only hear buzzing coming from my left ear. That's your fault for spacing out right in the middle of the living room. He looks up the clock on the wall, pursing his lips. Why are you up so early anyway? Your match is only at nine. Right now it's just six thirty. I couldn't sleep. Yeah, I can tell your eyes are really red. Wait, seriously? I woke up at the television, staring at my reflection on the dark screen. Ugh. Even on this super dark screen, I can tell that my eyes are very red. You should try at least take a nap. I have less than three hours before my match. I don't think that'd be a good idea. I didn't go into much suffering from sleep deprivation. Then I'd risk being late. 
I'll wait for if it comes to it. It's not like I have anything else to do today. Ah, there it is. Aki is now sulking again, holding his arms tightly against his body and looking down on his feet. Unfortunately, while I got all the way to the semi-finals without much problem, Aki lost yesterday at the quarter-finals. Well, at least now I get to watch you play live. Every dark cloud is a silver lining, after all. I can tell he's only saying that to try and sound positive. But it's easy to see that he's still dejected by it. He's even more competitive than I am, if that's at all possible. I walk up to my little brother, hugging him close to my chest. I'm so sorry you didn't make it to day two, Aki. But don't let it get to you, okay? I promise you, you're still going to improve a lot. Aki stays silent, merely shifting a bit in my arms, his head pressed up against my chest. I softly stroke his back and rub behind his ears, trying to fulfil my part to the gentle big brother who takes care of his little sibling. Something I've done for all my life, and frankly I enjoy doting on Aki. I used to do this a lot back when we were kids. Whenever he gets sad about Dad being gone, I'd hug him and sing to try and get him to sleep. But of course, the last time I did this was, God, six years ago? Time really flies. After nearly a minute's passed, Aki shifts again. His voice echoes from below my head, tiny and muffled. Aniki? Yeah? I speak in a low voice, trying to sound gentle and encouraging. I, I can't breathe. Whoa! I immediately pull away from him, lifting my arms up in the air. Aki coughs a few times, leaning against the wall for support. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I squeezed too hard. The squeezing wasn't a problem. You pushed my head against your chest. You blocked my nose and my mouth. Sorry. It's... It's fine. Aki sighs, straightening himself back up again. Thanks for trying to cheer me up. Yeah, I don't know if you remember, but I used to do that a lot when you were little. Why do you remember? It's a wistful, content look on his face. His tail is even wagging a little. Heh, <laughs> guess you have a better memory than I gave you credit for. Not really, just bits and pieces. I have a terrible memory, actually. Most of it is fuzzy. Either way, that really doesn't matter right now. Just get to your room and try to take a nap. I'll make sure to wake you up just in time for you to get ready. All right, all right, I'll try. And thanks, Aki. Of course, that's what little brothers are for. The sound of the doorbell echoes through the living room, snapping me out of my daze. I'll get it. Aki shouts from the kitchen and runs towards the entry hallway. I already finished preparing to leave a while ago. I guess I've been sitting around in the days since then. Tried psyching myself up. to Mixed results. Guess I just started spacing out again after that. How long has it been, anyway? The sound of chatter echoes in the entrance hall, but I don't really pay any attention. Wait, chatter? I turn around only to be greeted by the sight of my friends walking through the front door. Well, I told you it'd still be here. I'm perplexed. Shouldn't it be common sense to arrive early when you have a match? Common sense. You do know it's Hector we're talking about here, right? Oh, good morning, Hector-san. Well, at least someone bothered to actually greet me. I wave at them, trying my best to hide my surprise at suddenly seeing them all in my house. Hey, yeah, good morning. Uh, don't mind me asking, but what are you guys doing here? I thought we agreed to meet at the venue. Oh, yeah, we did agree to meet up there. In fact, we set up things so we'd meet uh, half an hour ago. What? No way. The match is starting in 20 minutes. If you don't want to get disqualified, I really suggest we hurry. Shuichi san was starting to get worried since you weren't showing up, so I suggested we come over to pick you up. Well, aren't you guys nice? Wait, where's Saya, by the way? She didn't want to come with? Oh, she did. His voice was almost sombre. Did, did something bad happen? Oh, well, not bad, per se. She was flat off the rails because you hadn't arrived yet and kept saying it's typical of you to be late, yada yada yada. I eventually suggested she tried to borrow some extra time to give the officials while we could come over here to pick you up. That way I could avoid her putting your head to a wall. Yikes. Well, that's more or less the situation. Now, I would love to not be late to my own match, so I'd really like to ask you to come with us already. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I thought for sure I'd be leaving the house ten minutes ago. Jeez, I really need to get it together, don't I? Well, you might as well run a bit if we want to make it on time. Or run? Do we really have to? You don't. Hector San and I, on the other hand, really do. It's alright, you guys want to run ahead. I can accompany Kobayashi san if he's not up to it. No, no, I'll be fine. I just didn't know there'd be running involved. Well, look on the bright side. At least you'll be getting some exercise. Yeah. We managed to get to the venue about five minutes before the start of the matches. I think I got to quite a bit of a warm up from this. Ah, we made it. Well, thank God. If I'd gotten a match loss because we were late, I swear I'd kill Hector san. No, no, there's no need for violence. Yeah, we got here on time. Chill. How did we 
so relaxed after nearly getting, nearly getting us disqualified. Well, luckily for me, here comes someone that can knock some sense into your head. Huh? What are you talking about? You stupid ass! Suddenly someone grabs my shoulders, spinning me around violently and hollering so loudly in my ears that I fear I might go deaf. What the hell do you think you're doing? Are you trying to make me sick with worry, are you? Ah, sigh Jen, settle down. Shaking me so hard I'm already seeing stars. My whole vision goes blurry and I can barely make out the shapes right in front of my face. But a wager my brain is bouncing around inside my skull as if it were a pinball machine. You're getting dizzy. Ugh, feel like I might throw up. Ah, I think that's enough, Sire-chan. Sire completely ignores him and continues shaking me like an empty ketchup bottle. Are you trying to get a ride out of me? Is that what you're doing? No, I, I just lost track of time. Sire-chan, I'm feeling really sick. Well, all right, Sire-chan, I'm serious. This has gone far enough. If you keep shaking him like that, he's going to puke all over you. If you snapping out of, I don't know, primal rage? Either way, if she's snapping out of it, Sire blinks looking between the two of them. Oh, I didn't see you guys there. Seriously, we've been standing here the whole time. I guess he'd never witnessed Sai and Sai throwing up a storm before, huh? Ugh, I need to lie down. Uh, sorry, no time for that. Your match starts at 9 o'clock and it's now uh, 8.58. You've got to be kidding me. There's no way I can play like this. My head is still spinning around. I can barely even stand up. Oh, maybe this will jog your wig. <laughs> Very funny. Well, at least your sense of humour is still intact. Oh, I just noticed, where's Kobayashi Kun? Wasn't he with you guys? Oh, you got left behind while he ran over here. Akiyoshi Kans Kun stayed with him. That's really nice of him. Yeah, well, you know, my brother, always aiming to please. Oh, well, maybe someone should take that as an example. I'm going to choose to ignore that. <laughs> Suit yourself. I'm going to hurry up to my court. I still need to change clothes. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Good luck, Hector. Kekun. I oh, don't worry. Three of us will do just fine. Kekun, I'll see you in the finals. We fist bump each other. I wish I was confident as you are, but I'll try. I'm not going down without a fight, that's for sure. Oh, you guys will be fine. You three are the uncontested best of the prefecture, as long as they've been since someone's come even close to beating any of you. Well, I'm not Hector, Sam. My lot matches are a lot closer than his. Shuichi shrugs. Ah, oh, you'll be fine. Just do your best. If I wasn't going to do that already. The two of them stared at each other for a few seconds, smiling. I turned around to head off, but after taking one single step. Wait! June and Aki ran up to us in a hurry. June is panting heavily, and as soon as he stops, his whole body curves forward, leaning on his own knees. Aki, on the other hand, has yet to even break a sweat. Seeing a 12 year old in better shape than one of my classmates makes me a little sad. Wait, you can't go off without me? Our match is about to start, you know. I, I know, I just... He takes a deep breath. And, Good luck, Hector-san! I instantly jump back, covering my ears against the assault of this loud, booming voice. Yeah, June, settle down. Oh, sorry, guess I got over-enthusiastic. I'll see. There are a bunch of people staring at us. I suddenly feel awkward standing here. Oh, so Hector-san's the only one who gets a good luck from you, huh? What? I didn't even think of me either. Oh, no, that's not what I... Uh, don't worry about it, we're just teasing you. I'm not. Keiko ignores her, putting her hand on June's shoulder and giving her a few gentle pats on the back. All right, we're already running late. Gonna have to hurry. Uh, same here. I'm going to be switching over your call to cheer on all of you. And yes, even you are a Shahara. Keisuke smiles, nodding at him. It's not like I'd even expect you to be there, but sure, suit yourself. I run to my signed court as fast as I can. I'm already two minutes late by the time I arrive, but luckily I get there just before the officials declare it a match loss. <laughs> guess you managed to get here on time. Jeez, the officials usually ask you as a player if he's okay with waiting for his opponent to arrive. If he's not, then he gets an automatic win. I get the win is important and everything, but this guy was ready to give me a match loss over a couple of minutes of delay. Just give me one second to get ready. At least that man should change my shirt on the way over. I just need to check the strings in my racket, Sam. Okay, all set. I get in place as fast as I can and try not to delay any, everything any further. At least running over here already counts as warming up. Alright, it's time for me to do this. I take a deep breath and ready myself. I see an opportunity to return a straight shot on the open court and strike the ball with as much power as I can muster. 
hits the court and slides away. My opponent doesn't even come close to reaching it. The ball just stands there panting and looking at the ball in the days. Game says a match won by Mishimai. Held 6 2, 6 love. Well, this match went pretty fast. Must be some kind of record. It even take me an hour. I walk over to the net to shake hands with my opponent, who simply looks at me with a sour expression and grumbles something coherent. A nice game. Well, I can't help you there, buddy. I put my things back in my bag and hurry out to the court. I'm welcomed by the smiles of my little brother in June. A nice game, Nikki. You're awesome as always. And that last ball especially. She just went and zoom and went out of his reach. It's pretty fun to watch. <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoyed yourself. Uh, Shuichi's been around recently. Yeah, he said Saya San is doing well on her match, but... Yeah? No, apparently Oshihara San is losing. Oh, what? Without even thinking, I dash over to his court as fast as I can. What? Hey, Nikki, wait up. I hear their voices fading away as I continue to leave them behind. I hear the sound of the ball before I even reach their court. I can see Shuichi standing way too close to the fence, clenching his fists around the metal link so hard the entire arm is shaking. I'm surprised the thing isn't getting crushed. Sh Shuichi. His looks soft and somewhat as he turns to look at me, but I can see the irritation clearly plastered on his face. Oh, Hector, your match is finished already. I take a second to catch my breath, run all the way to the other side of the club after a match still leaves me a little winded. Yeah, ah, uh, one of course, but June told me things aren't going well at this end, so I rushed over here. Did you at least inform the desk clerks of the result? Uh, no, but I can do it after this match ends. He nods, turning his head back to the game. I look at the two guys playing, the difference is immediately obvious. Keisuke's running ragged, desperately trying to keep up with the other players' assault. It's like a cannon firing repeatedly against the wall, the cracks quickly beginning to show. And by the time I got here, it already evolved from cracks to full blown demolition. What's the score? Well, right now it's 5 2 on the second set. The other guy won the first one by 6 3. Me and the case case are getting overwhelmed from the get go. But, but how? I knew he was good. My gut feeling told me this guy was good ever since we met him out in the street stats. That day I've been watching multiple videos of him, but I could never imagine he was this good. It takes some serious skill to take Case K down, let alone this easily. None of his strategies have worked. A most he could force a rally to go on for a little longer, but the other guy would either run him out to the point or just break through with brute strength. The sound of the fence's link shaking echoes. I look down to see Shuichi gripping even tighter. God damn it, Oshihara, don't you dare lose like this. Have some pride. Ah, oh, Shuichi looks really scary right now. Probably doesn't even notice he's talking out loud. Seeing Keikun lose and affecting him like this much? Never expected that. Come on, come on, you can do this. You bastard, you can't lose here, you're better than this. I can't tell whether he's rooting for him or not. Aki and June catch up to us with the tiger looking like he's about to drop the floor from exhaustion. That's why he took so long, I couldn't leave Kobayashi stand behind. Oh, thanks, Aki. How bad is it? One particular shot echoes much louder than the rest. Keisuke's opponent, Yuya Kuhn, just smashed a ball that Keisuke couldn't control and ended up returning too high. The shot hits the ground with force, leaving Keikun completely incapable of reacting. 4D15. Match point. No! The mood grows more and more sombre as we watch both players return to their positions to resume play. Match point. Keikun allows his opponent to score again, he opponent to score again, he loses. Oroshihara san can't lose like this, right? Damn, come on Oroshihara, get a grip. Yakita throws his ball high into the sky and serves. It's a fast wide slice to aim to jump away from the court. Come on Keiko, you can get it. He barely managed to reach the ball in time, tapping it over the other side and keeping it as close to the lines as he can, returning the ball to his opponent's backhand. Nikita runs the ball and... He's going around it! Yuriakun runs around the ball, putting himself in position to return the ball with his forehand. It's a fast flat shot to the side of the court and... Chuh! Even with his speed, Keisuke is nowhere near the ball by the time it bounces. <laughs> no way. <sighs> the crowd goes quiet for a second, absorbing everything that just happened. The umpire opens his mouth to make the call. The game set a match won by Coconut. Count 6 3, 6 2. <laughs> the crowd erupts and cheers, clapping and screaming words of praise to the victor. Meanwhile, the four of us stand in place, frozen in shock. Case just lost? 
In his first year as a high school student, he'd already established himself as the second best player in our prefecture. A guy like this, that just lost to some no-name first year player? Damn it. Shuichi kicks the fence in frustration. Whoa, calm down there, big guy. He grumbles something incoherent and continues to glare at nowhere. Uh, come on, guys, we have to at least try to stay positive when he comes out, okay? You know Roshihara, no matter what we do or say, he's going to be down. I know, I'm trying to think of some way, so, something I can do something I can do to cheer him up. He, here he comes. I walk over to the court's exit. Yuri Kuhn has already left a while ago, not even bothering to linger around. Good thing he didn't notice us. I don't know if I'd be in a good enough mood to have a conversation with him if he tried to talk to me again. KSK slowly walks over the exit, looking down at the floor with a complicated expression the whole time. Ah. First he only sees our feet, but when he looks up and notices our faces, he finally reacts. His eyes look distant and tired. Even though I'm looking for clues to how he feels, any kind of clue, he merely looks away with a painfully neutral expression. I guess it's too much trouble you guys want to watch that, huh? Okay, Keisuke-san. Okay, okay, it's the first time June's called him by his first name. Case Kate doesn't fail to notice that. His eyes immediately snap in towards the tiger. Hey, don't give me that face, okay? Well, but I'm really sorry that... June chokes up a bit. He's not good at consoling people, and frankly, it shows. Gee, seriously, cheer up a bit, okay? Well, it's just a tennis match. There'll be dozens of other matches in my career. It's not like I can win every single one. Kaykun smiles widely to show he's not upset. Oh, is that so? It's obvious. It's painfully obvious to anyone. Case case smile is strained, forced. He's not wrong. This is just a tennis match. There will be many others to come. If he were to feel down after each and every loss, then he'd be burdening himself too much. None of that matters. Feelings aren't logical. No one likes to lose. The frustration you feel after defeat, it's the same no matter who you are. If you're a rank amateur or a professional, I'm sure the frustration someone feels after losing is always the same. As long as you truly love something, there's no way you won't be frustrated by defeat. Not bothering to say another word, Case K walks past us. I want to say something to him. I should say something to him. But I don't have the right. Who am I to encourage him after a tough loss when I've been sulking about mine for years now? The score. The score doesn't always tell you how a match went. Even if the score seems lopsided, the match could still have been a close one. This isn't the case. Just seeing at that last point when I could already tell. KSK was toyed with the whole match. He never had a chance. He was just forced to keep playing and watching as his chances of victory were taken away from him. In tennis, there's no such thing as a certain victory. Anyone can have a chance. At least that's what my father used to tell me. But how can I say something like that to him after seeing how his match went? Roshihara. Shuichi calls out to him and the hair stops dead in his tracks. He doesn't turn around, keeping his back to us the whole time. What is it? His voice comes out shakier than before. Are you... are you going to be all right? Case K's body shifts. He puts an arm on his waist and begins slowly shaking his head. Oh God, not you too. Oh what? Don't start with this sappy melodrama and pretend you're worried about me. It's creepy. What? Completely taken aback by his response, Shuichi freezes on the spot, able to do or say anything. If you guys will excuse me, I need some time alone to think. KSK walks up to a nearby bench and plops himself down, grabbing a towel from his back and putting it over his head. He leans forward on his seat, the towel covering his head in a way that I can't see his face. Can't see what it looks like. Case mm, KSK-san, are you sure you don't want us to keep you company? Yeah, I'm fine, just leave me alone. Go watch Mizugishi san's match or something. I don't care, just get out of my hair. Oh, right. KSK's words are sharp, sharp enough to make June instantly give up on offering him support. Truthfully, I can't come with anything to say either. What's there even to say? Aniki. Aki grabs the sleeve of my shirt, tugging on it to grab my attention. Shouldn't you say something? He whispers to me, his eyes full of worry. I shake my head in negative. I don't have any rights to cheer him up right now, and honestly, I don't think I could. There's nothing I could say to him or as his friend or as his rival. From the corner of my eye, I can see Shuichi shaking. I turn to look at him, I see him with clenched fists and gritted teeth. His hands are clenched so tightly that they shake violently and I feel he could puncture his palm with his claws. Shoot. Rugging any words out, Chuichi begins walking towards the hair with heavy pounding steps. You little bastard. He grabs Case K by the collar of his shirt and lifts him up, leaving the hair hovering a few centimetres above his seat. 
Keisuke rushes to stabilise himself, planting his feet firmly on the ground and moving his arms to support himself against the bench. I'm amazed this sure doesn't rip from being grabbed and tugged like that. Even his initial reaction was that of shock, Keisuke is quick to compose himself. What the hell are you doing? What's wrong with you? Me? What's wrong with you? You got your pride hooks, you got beaten like a chump and now you're going to lash out on us? And I'm being creepy? How dare you, little ungrateful prick! Finally regaining my senses, I rush over the two to try and defuse the situation. Sh Shuichi, that's enough. Let him go. As soon as I place my hands on his shoulder, Shuichi moves his arm to push me aside. I can tell he's holding himself back, as I probably would have planted my ass firmly on the ground. This doesn't concern you, Hector. Fuck off. His eyes don't even move a little bit towards my direction. They continue to stare at Keisuke's eyes and move him. What little I can see of Keisuke's face, since most of it is blocked by Shuichi's towering figure, shows me a snide look. Oh please, you worried about me? Don't make me laugh. I don't need that kind of thing from you. Our relationship isn't like that. And yeah, I don't care about your sympathy. I don't want it. You can go shove it somewhere else. Oh, stop being such a bitch. We're just trying to help you cheer up. There's no need for you to talk to us like that, especially Jun Kun. I don't care, don't need your help. Shuichi pauses for a second, tightening his grip around Keikun. For a split second there, I'm sure he's going to punch him. Instead, he lets him go and takes a step back. Fine, you don't want sympathy? Then that's fine. Here's what I really think of your pissy little attitude. You're trying to pretend you're fine, you don't need our help and you don't want us around? Don't make me laugh. It's so obvious that you're hurting. It's so obvious it's actually kind of disgusting. Shuichi said. Put a hand in front of June, trying to silently tell him to just watch. He does as instructed and quiets down. I don't think interrupting these two is a good idea right now, plus... I kind of have a feeling about what Shuichi's trying to do. I think I'll just trust him on this. How are you calling disgusting? Yeah, of course. What do you plan on doing now? Mope around like a loser? Oh, no one needs a sad sack. Get yourself together already. This is pathetic. Well, anyone would be down after loss. What are you talking about? Well, not you. What's with those dead eyes of yours that look like they're already given up? Well, I've never seen such a pathetic look on your face before. It irritates me. You've never been the type to get down after a loss. You always use it to prop yourself forward. Moping around, lashing out. Ah, oh, don't screw with me. That's not you, and you know it. You don't even know me all that well. Oh, please. We might not be the greatest of friends, but I've been spending almost all my days with you since we met. Well, I've seen you lose plenty of times before. I've never seen you getting down. Annoyed? Sure. But down? Never. So pull yourself together already. This isn't the Roshihara that I've come to respect. They both glare at each other a few more seconds. My heart feels like it might pop from the tension. If I'm wrong and this goes badly, I don't have to deal with a fist fight between my friends. But then the impossible happens. Kay Kuhn sits himself back down, sighing out loud. Fine, I see what you're trying to say. <laughs> I think this is the first time since we've met you've spoken to me like this. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't blow up at you any sooner. You really are a pain to deal with. Same here. God, you're so insufferable. I can see the corner of Case K's mouth curled up in a half smile. Was was I right? Oh, come on, we don't need to deal with this right now. I need to cool off. Shuichi walks up to us, opening his arms and hurting us away from Case K. What about Case K's son? I don't want to deal with this annoying ass right now. If you're not coming, then I'll leave you here. Shuichi turns around to leave. Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. I continue to stand in place, my eyes fixated on case case the other two walk away. Aki tugs on my sleeves again, looking up at me in confusion. Aniki, should we go with them? I could case K one last time. Even if it's faint, I can see his shoulders shaking a little bit. These two, they really can't be honest with each other, can they? It should be obvious what Shuichi was actually doing, and case K knows what he was doing, yet they would admit it. We really are birds of feather when it comes to this. Yeah, let's leave Keikun alone for now and go with the others. Hey, Shuichi, wait up. Takes us a bit of running, but we might should catch up to Shuichi next to the service desk. Jeez, did he never go all the way to the centre of the venue? Jesus, slow down a little. Look at Jude, he can barely catch his breath. I, I'm fine. You don't look fine. I'm fine. Well, what, Kiyoshi Kun, why, why are there two of you? Actually, is he... Is he stumbling on his feet? I stand corrected. He's the picture of health. Oh, I guess I did exaggerate a little. I just need to get away from that idiot. You could really do some self-control, you know. Did you really have to tear into him in public? No, I guess I just let my anger get the better of me. I hate it when people act all defeated and moping instead of just doing something about it. I snapped. Oh, sorry. Mm, I don't think that's what it was about. 
Well, what do you mean? I think you're just coming up with an excuse you don't want to admit that you're trying to look out for him. What? Oh, that's ridiculous. I despise Orochihara. I was just looking for a chance to yell at him for a bit. So you say, but I think you're just pretending to do that when in reality you were trying to cheer him up with some tough love. What? That's... I mean... Oh, no. Nah. What was his going to be good? Aki pulls June a few steps back with a smile placid to on his face and decides to pay them no mind. Yeah, huh? At no moment did you insult him. All he did was tell him he wasn't acting like himself and tried to encourage him. I, I would never. You two really can't be honest about how much you care for each other, huh? Oh, shut up. Shokun, you're such a tsundere. How do you pronounce that word? I try to imitate a cutesy boyish voice. <clears throat> Thanks, Basket. It comes off all weird and raspy. Okay, that's okay. But it does its job. Shuichi turns into an even darker shade of red. Shut up. Seeing him looking so flustered is absolutely hilarious. He's so adorable and he's trying to hide his embarrassment. I already know the answer to this question, but at least you've always been like this. Oh yeah, for as long as I can remember, they've always acted like an old married couple. All the roles are kind of reversed from when I was little. Really? What do you mean? Well, well... Aki, shut up! We both speak in unison, cutting him off before I can get any further in his story. Fine, fine. While June is completely caught off guard by a reaction, Aki is incredibly nonchalant about it, not one bit surprised or upset by it. Jeez, I feel so out of whack all of a sudden. You do, I'm the one who just played a full match. Oh please, your match didn't even last an hour. Which reminds me, we don't need to relay the results to the officials. Oh yeah, that's true, I'll be right back. It doesn't take me more than five minutes to inform the results and then get the time for my next match. It looks like we're scheduled to play at 2pm, a bit later than on previous years where the finals would be at noon. I guess they expect more people to come watch if they schedule it for after lunch. That also means I get to eat something for the match, so overall I'm pretty happy about it. I just need to catch an early lunch so I still won't still be digesting my food by the time I get to play. That'll be a nightmare. Huh? I get back to the spot where Shuichi, Aki and June were standing and... Only June is here? Hey, where are the other two? Well, they went over to Mishogishi San's court to watch a match. I don't much stay around to tell you about it. That's kind of heartless that they just abandoned me here. It won't be so dramatic, they just went to a nearby court. Plus, it's not that we left without telling you where we went. I stay behind to keep you informed. Yeah, I'll thank you for that. The other two, though. I really think you're overthinking it. Easy for you to say. You really think. Anything can be considered overthinking to you. Hey, did you just call me dumb? What? No, I called you simple. Simple? Is that considered an offensive thing to call someone? Uh, no. Oh, okay. His gullibility hurts. Let's just hurry up to where the others are. Sure, where's the court? You didn't ask him where the court, what court the match has been held at? No, I thought you knew. I sigh, rubbing the bridge of my nose and counting to ten. I'll go check the information counter. Give me a sec. Okay. Luckily, Sai's match has taken place in the nearby court, so it doesn't take very long to get there. Okay, cool. I'm surprised to see you here. KSK waves an excited at us. He seems so listless. Still feeling bad? Of course, I'm not going to pick myself up in 20 minutes, but I have better things to do than mope. Yeah, that's the spirit. Heh, <laughs> you say so. Honestly, I was all surprised to see him here. I thought he would have just crawled into a hole to die after the humiliating defeat he had. Shuichi, could you please not talk about me if I wasn't here? With how apathetic and silent you're being, you might as well not be here. Could you two stop here for just one minute? Uh, sorry. They never learn, do they? Aki has a match going. And like the other two, Aki has his eyes glued to the game the whole time, watching like a hawk. So surprised, really, an aspiring player would want to watch a play of Sire's Caliber. Well, Sire sounds winning quite comfortably, actually. She took the first set 6 3 and she dropped a single game in the second set. Take a look at the scoreboard and see the second set is currently 4 love. Why was every single semi final match been super one sided today? Seems so. Keisuke's voice is cold and detached. I can instantly tell I've stepped on his toes. Sorry. It's fine. He sighs, rubbing his nose with his eyes closed and his brows furrowed. He does this for a few seconds while turning his attention back to the game. Mr. Gishi san is a really is a remarkable player though. I don't often get the chance to see her playing seriously. 
Was she really that different from practice? Oh, for sure, she's the type that can't really give her all if it's not do or die. Yeah, Sai's always been the type to thrive under pressure. The higher the stakes, the better she does. Whenever she has her back against the wall is when she's more dangerous. That's the worst kind of play to face. You're also like that sometimes, hector son. I am? Well, it used to be that you were like that all the time, but someone's been slacking off the past few years. I can't really refute that. Sai shoots a fast slice that quickly escapes from her opponent's reach, winning the point. Game count? Five, love. No, if she keeps at this pace, it won't take much longer to have the results for this match. Honestly, if your opponent lasts another five minutes, I'll be surprised. Oh, by the way, Nikki, what time's your next match? Uh, 2 p.m. We'll have time to have lunch before that. You'll have to make it an early lunch to avoid indigestion and the problems in the middle of the match. Oh, don't worry, Mom. I already thought of that. Well, as long as you're taking care of yourself, dear. These two are weird sometimes. Tell me about it. You see, nothing used to be so much worse. Will the opinionated audience please shush and get back to watching the match? Aye, Your Majesty. Aki does an exaggerated bow to mock me, eliciting a, a chuckle from both Jewel and Keisuke. Aki Kun, you're still such a cute kid. Shuichi starts to pull on Aki's cheeks, making him immediately go red and try to push the bigger dog away. Oh, where did it come from? Stop it! Shuichi continues to tease him, tormenting my little brother and watching him frolic in place, trying to push his hand away. I won't say anything more, please stop. Aki might not admit it, but he actually enjoys being fawned over by Shuichi like this. He's only acting like this, he's embarrassed that other people are seeing it. Very cute child indeed. Okay, Shuichi, I think that's enough. If you tease him any more than, than that, his head might explode. Yeah, that's the only reason why you're stopping him. Yep. Uh, too bad, Aki Kun, your big bro's already my partner in crime. No! Put a hand on top of his head and pet him gently. And Iki, not you too. Shuichi and I both have so much fun toying with Aki, we completely stop paying attention to the match. Hey guys, how much the match is? Wait, what are you guys doing? Sai walks up on us as Shuichi's holding Aki's arms up and I'm tickling his stomach. Only then do I realise the match is already over, and that June and Keisuke both distance themselves from us, and that people are watching. Shuichi seems to realise the same thing as he quietly puts Aki down and moves away from him, clearing his throat. I straighten myself up, trying to appear serious again. So, ahem, <clears throat> where, were, where were we? Aki Kun? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Too many high voices together. <clears throat> Aki adjusts himself, looking down to try and hide his embarrassed face. Do you need me to call the police on these two perverts? What? Huh? Honestly, what are you two thinking doing that to a kid in the middle of a public place? What the hell do you think the people seeing this would think? Sorry, we just didn't think. You two never think. Never, isn't that so harsh? It's fine, I'm already used to this anyway. See, he doesn't mind. Thanks, Aki. Aki nods, still hiding his face from us. Of course he doesn't mind, it's called Stockholm Syndrome. Please don't compare us to kidnappers. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if someone saw you two doing that. Misunderstood and decided to call the cops on you. Oh, Junko, not you too. I know I would have. Hey! Oh, come on, it's clear that he's my brother. Anyone can see that. Look at the family resemblance. That just makes it even worse. What? How is it worse? I don't know, it's kind of creepy. I. you. how. what? Aki reaches his arm up, giving me a few taps on the back of the head. Hang on, it looks like he froze again. Gonna need to restart. Haha, <laughs> very funny. It could restart his head every time it's frozen, and we'd have to glue down the reset button. Was well, that supposed to be funny? I don't know, you thought good need to restart was funny. I'm having a hard time following this conversation. I look to the side, I see the both June and Case K giving us weird looks. I don't even bother to follow it anymore, I'm just waiting for them to finish talking so we can go somewhere else. Uh, alright, alright, we're sorry. Can we just drop this subject already? Sai so puts her hand to her chin and she's thinking very hard about something. Well, I guess I can always yell at you to whenever. Sure, consider it dropped. Now, if you excuse me, I have to go to the info desk to tell them the results of the match. All right, how about we go to eat at a nearby restaurant? Finals are only going to be starting at 2pm. Oh, sure, sounds good. Wait for me at the entrance. Sure, we'll be there. All right, try to think of a place for us to eat while I'm going there. Before I can walk away the others, Kate's cake grabs my arm, pulls me aside. Hang on, I need to talk to you. Oh, sure, what's up? I'm a bit confused why you couldn't say whatever it is you needed to say while everyone else was here. He pauses for a few seconds, pursing his lips, and slowly begins to talk. I want to give you some information on your opponent. There's some stuff that would think it would do you good if you knew. 
Oh, that. Don't worry, I'll be fine. I've watched videos of matches so many times already. I know everything I need to know. Shakes his head sideways. You don't really. I've also studied these videos lots of times, but I never really noticed some stuff. Yeah, I'll be fine. Look, just take my word for it, okay? What's the harm in hearing me out? I know, it feels kind of underhanded to get information from his previous opponent. Kei Kun sighs, rubbing the bridge of his nose with a furrow brow. Well, do as you like then. If you don't want to hear me, then that's just fine. Just don't complain later you lost because you were caught by surprise. Do you really think this guy could beat me? I, well, it's just... Come on, be honest here. Yes, I do think he could beat you. Not just in the in tennis no match is ever 100% way. I really can't tell who would win. I think it'd be really close. That's... Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Honestly, I had a bad feeling watching the recordings, but I thought it was just that. A feeling. I think logically that guy didn't even look like he was good enough to beat Case K. Well, I guess there's no harm hearing what you have to say, but can we do this quickly? I don't want to keep the others waiting. Sure, I'll try to be brief. Okay, so the first thing you need to keep in mind... In the end, his brief explanation ended up taking over 15 minutes. Shuichi had to come back to look for us, at which point he just cut off in the middle of a sentence and refused to speak about it with the others around. So much for a briefing. Well, I guess I did manage to get some useful information. And before we get into Hector's match, we're going to leave things to you, because if I remember right, this one will go on for a bit. So, next time, next episode... Hector's match against Yuga Kun, whose name I'll probably be mangling all the way through. And we'll continue to mangle, that's just how things are. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that. We'll back with some more uh, Mining Tour Hotel next, and then we'll see how things coming out. But we're back with a, hopefully a more regular schedule now, we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.